U.S. History Star Review with Ms. Lashi. Industrialization and the Gilded Age. Bessemer Process. Previously, it took a day to produce five tons of steel. The Bessemer Process enabled five tons of steel to be produced in only 15 minutes. Steel became more readily available. Railroads and skyscrapers began to appear across the country. Harnessing the power of steam. Coal was used to heat water until it turned into steam. The steam was then used to power machines. Without the power of steam, the Industrial Revolution would not have been possible. Electricity Electricity made many new inventions possible. The early Industrial Revolution relied on steam or water power. Towards the second half of the Industrial Revolution, electricity was more widely available. Thomas Edison He invented the first effective light bulb. Alexander Graham Bell He invented the first telephone. He used telegraph wires to transmit audio across great distances. Industrialization After the Civil War, the U.S. experienced a time of rapid industrialization. There was a shift from the economy being largely agricultural to a manufacturing economy. Machinery made it possible to produce large quantities of goods for cheaper prices. Contributing Factors of Industrialization An abundance of coal, large numbers of immigrants coming to the U.S., a free enterprise economy, and the U.S. government practicing laissez-faire. Railroads began to cover the countryside. They connected cities and rural areas to each other. Goods were able to be transported to new markets. Corporations A corporation is a business that is considered to be a person and is charted by the state. Shareholder. Corporations sell stocks or shares of their company. A shareholder has partial ownership in the corporation and shares in the profits. Urbanization. As the economy shifted from an agricultural to an industrial economy, cities began to grow. People left farms in the rural areas in search of industrial jobs in urban areas. Settlement houses. These were community centers for immigrants. Settlement houses sought to educate, provide health care, and help with obtaining employment. Jane Adams. She was the founder of Whole House. Whole House was a settlement house in Chicago. She was an advocate for women's and children's rights. Urbanization and the growth of cities. Cities grew so quickly that they were not planned out very well. Sanitation became a major problem of urbanization. Public transportation was also inefficient. Many people lived in crowded tenement apartments. Tenement apartments. These were apartment buildings that were virtually thrown up. Many did not have running water or bathroom facilities. Tenement homes were built in the slums of cities. They housed thousands of immigrants. Large numbers of people would share a single room tenement apartment. 
Immigration 20 million immigrants came to the U.S. from 1870 to 1920. 300,000 Chinese immigrants came to the U.S. from 1851 to 1883. Many worked building railroads. There were two waves of immigration during the 1800s with old and new immigrants. Old and new immigrants. Prior to 1890, the majority of immigrants came from Northern and Western Europe. They were called the old immigrants. After 1890, more immigrants came from Southern and Eastern Europe. They were called the new immigrants. New immigrants caused tension with the old immigrants and many other American citizens. Immigration push and pull factors. Immigrants came to America for many different reasons. Push factors. These are factors that make someone want to leave. War, poverty, religious or ethnic persecution, famine, and low wages. Pull factors. These are factors that make someone want to go to a new place. Higher wages, plentiful foods, religious freedom, a peaceful region, and opportunities. Ellis Island. Most immigrants traveled in steerage on ships across the Atlantic. Once they arrived in America, they were processed through Ellis Island. If they were ill or incapable of taking care of themselves, they were sent back. Immigrant life in the U.S. The majority of immigrants during the Industrial and Gilded Age settled in cities. Most immigrants were poor and escaping horrible conditions back in their native land. They often faced discrimination even from other immigrant groups. Most immigrants worked long hours for little pay. They lived in ethnic neighborhoods and crowded tenement homes. Americanization. Immigrant children learned English and American culture. America became a melting pot as immigrant children Americanized. Nativism. Nativism continued to rise as more immigrants arrived in the U.S. Nativists are those who are born in the U.S. Many nativists were concerned that immigrants were taking their jobs. Ironically, the majority of nativists came from immigrant families. Chinese Exclusion Act. This law outlawed Chinese immigration from the U.S. in 1882. It was not overturned until 1943. Big Business Big Business grew during the Industrial and Gilded Ages. Trusts and monopolies were formed. Entrepreneurs became industrial tycoons. The pros and cons of big business in America. Pros Larger businesses are usually able to produce large quantities. When you can produce in large quantities, you're able to reduce the cost to produce the item. Production of large quantities means that it's cheaper for consumers to purchase. Big businesses have the capability to hire more employees. Cons. Large businesses can abuse workers. Big businesses usually disregard and pollute the area in which they do business. They often lobby Congress by financially backing congressmen and women in elections. Big businesses usually have an advantage, especially in regards to price and influence compared to small businesses. Captain of Industry. These were people who grew huge fortunes 
during the Industrial and Gilded Age. They often contributed to society through charitable contributions or donations. Robber Barons These were business tycoons during the Industrial and Gilded Age that grew very wealthy at the expense of their employees and their customers. They did not care about the working conditions of their employees and paid them meager wages. Robber barons would try to charge the highest rates possible to their customers. They would also try to form monopolies and trusts. Monopolies. This is when one company controls the entire supply of a service or product. Trusts. These were created to form monopolies after they were outlawed. You have a group of small companies that join together to form a larger company. They almost always have a monopoly when working together. Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie was an industrial tycoon during the Industrial and Gilded Age. He controlled the majority of the steel industry. Carnegie is considered a captain of industry and a robber baron. He wrote an essay called The Gospel of Wealth. Gospel of Wealth. This was an essay written by Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie said that the wealthy had a responsibility to help those less fortunate through philanthropy. Philanthropy is donating money to charitable causes. John D. Rockefeller Rockefeller was a captain of industry and a robber baron. He controlled 90% of the oil industry through his company called Standard Oil. After monopolies were outlawed, he formed a trust with Standard Oil. Political Machines These were organizations that controlled the different political parties in major cities. They were corrupt and served the rich. Political machines were run by political bosses. They relied heavily on new immigrants. Political bosses. They ran political machines in major cities during the Industrial and Gilded Age. Political bosses targeted new immigrants. They promised to help them obtain citizenship, employment, and housing. Tweed Ring Scandal. William Boss Tweed defrauded the city of New York out of millions of dollars. He became a symbol of corruption. Gilded Age. Mark Twain wrote a book called The Gilded Age, A Tale of Today. In his book, he satirized American society after the Civil War. Greed and corruption plagued the nation while a select few lived in luxury. Gilded metal is a cheaper metal like iron that is gilded or covered in a thin layer of gold. It looked nice on the outside, but if you took a closer look, you would see that appearances aren't always what they seem to be. Sherman Antitrust Act Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act to outlaw trusts. It was now illegal to form trusts. Interstate Commerce Act. Under this law, only Congress had the authority to regulate interstate commerce. It also prevented railroads from charging farmers high rates to ship shorter routes. The Interstate Commerce Commission was created to enforce the act. Urban Working Conditions. 
laborers would work up to 14-hour shifts. It was normal to work six days a week. Immigrants often worked for very low wages. Women and children were paid less than men. Workers had no rights. There was no such thing as workers' compensation for injured workers. If you weren't happy with your job, there were immigrants who were willing to take your job. Urban workers discontent. They wanted higher wages. Workers also wanted to work shorter hours and have two days off. They were bored with doing the same thing for hours at a time. Laborers were unhappy with the lack of safety precautions as many were injured and killed each year. Children in the Industrial Age There weren't laws that prevented children from working. Children were often used for the most dangerous jobs, working in between machines and in coal mines. They were often injured and killed. 20% of the nation's children under 15 years old were working in the factories. Workers stand up for themselves. Unskilled workers had no job security as they could be easily replaced. Unions became popular for workers. Strikes were a popular tactic of unions. Unions. They were popular with unskilled and skilled laborers. Unions worked to improve wages and working conditions. They also sought to reduce the number of hours worked. A single worker had a small voice, but a union of workers had a large collective voice. Knights of Labor Unskilled and skilled laborers formed the Knights of Labor in 1869. The skilled laborers resented being in the same union as unskilled workers. The union took off in the 1880s with Terence Powderly as their leader. Despite growing in size, they were never able to organize properly and had several failed strikes. American Federation of Labor Samuel Gompers founded the American Federation of Labor, AFL, in 1881. The AFL kept skilled and unskilled workers in different unions that were united in a federation. Unskilled laborers were still often excluded despite making up 90% of the population. They worked to improve working conditions and to reduce the workday to eight hours. The AFL wanted closed shops, creating greater job security. Closed shop. Businesses where only members of the union were hired. Strikes. Strikes are when workers refuse to work until their demands are met. Demands usually involved pay and working conditions. Strikes were very common in the 1880s and 1890s. Haymarket Affair of 1886. Workers were striking in Haymarket Square when a bomb exploded. 67 people were injured and seven police officers were killed. Many people blamed the union workers for the violence. Farm Crisis During the 1880s and 1890s, a farming crisis occurred. Farmers had not rotated their crops and they overworked the land. Railroads were also overcharging them to ship goods on shorter routes. Many farmers were faced with debt. They began to support the Populist Party. Populist Party They were a third party, not the Democratic or Republican Party. 
their main support base came from farmers who were struggling during the farming crisis. Up next, westward expansion. <music>